Yeah, th th this one was a pretty obvious choice, huh? <laughs> I uh, wanted to try to keep that one under spoilers, you know, under wraps, but yeah. Anyone who's even remotely paying attention, you know, you could be a kid and you'd be like, um, yeah, I think waiting for the MPG to come to me is a great idea. Especially after the curses of creeping coffins is all made out, yeah. <laughs> what? Oh. What a great idea. Super Camtasia made me deselect my notepad. That's right, special guest appearance today by Notepad. The return of Notepad. <laughs> okay, so, let's see whether we made the right decision. We're going to think the MPG will come to us first and turn to page 125. Hmm. Because me doing the opposite of what you guys suggested is not a foreshadowing thing or whatever. <laughs> you decide to sit down and wait. If the MPG is so powerful, you think, then let him come to me. With the fencing foil in your hand, you plop down on a chair in the hall. Sparkle, your grandma's mud, comes and sits at your feet. You feel better knowing someone's on your side, even if it is just an old dog. A loud knocking begins inside the walls. A moment later, a ghost floats through the wall toward you. A creepy ghost without eyes. Ooh, he moans sadly. He hovers closer. You stand up and hold out the foil. Your hands tremble. Is this the MPG? Sparkle jumps to his feet, too. Arf! 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 The dog barks. The ghost instantly disappears. Did Sparkle do that? Hey, Sparkle, you say, patting the dog's head. Good job! A minute later, you hear a terrible groaning sound. Another ghost appears in the hall. This one has worms crawling all over his face. A low growl begins in Sparkle's throat. Will it work again? Will Sparkle scare away the ghost? Find out on page 103. Get him, Sparkle, you shout. The hideous ghost floats toward you. This, the worms wriggle through his matted hair. This guy is gross. Woof! Sparkle barks right in the ghost's disgusting face. Nothing happens. Uh, again, Sparkle, you command. But Sparkle tucks his tail between his legs, whimpers, and slinks away. Sparkle, come back, you call. But it's no use. That's one terrified mutt. You turn to face the wormy ghost. The ghost brings his face right next to yours. The worms wriggle from the ghost to you. They crawl in your mouth, up your nose, in your ears. Is it possible to die from being totally grossed out? Well, even if it isn't, the worms make it impossible for you to breathe, making this the end. Wow, that's a great ending right there. I mean... Uh, what do you mean my USB device isn't recognized? Listen, don't fuck with me. <laughs> I accidentally disconnected my mouse whenever I put the book down, I guess. I think my USB cord has gotten more sensitive. Anyway, what I was trying to say is, Oh my god, we didn't even run or anything. We are totally super cool, awesome, most intelligent -est teenagers ever. I should turn on word rap. Word rap! <laughs> because seriously, the dog had the intelligence to run, but we didn't have the intelligence to run. We just stood there and let the worms violate us. I'm just saying, considering my exposure to ghosts that we've already covered in this book, numerous exposures to ghosts, I would get over the fact that it was a ghost and would not stand still in stark terror. I hope. I would GTFO lol. That is GTFO lol noob okay so let's go to the graveyard also you folks pointed out that uh we kind of need to write down the things that mac mcfarling told us listen to me <laughs> that wasn't a good impression at all okay you race out to the graveyard you've got to find the fencing woman's grave fast then it hits you you 
You only know her first name, Sarah. Sarah who? You run up and down the rows of tombstones, searching for a grave marked Sarah. Naturally, you find two. One is Sarah Grayson. Sarah Grayson. Born... 1820. Died... 1895. The other is Sarah McGinnis. Sarah McGinnis. Born... in... 1918. Died in 1940. It's up to you. Which is the right Sarah? Think very carefully, then pick one. You balance the sword under one arm and feel around in your pockets. You pull a broken pencil from your jeans. You glance down and find a crumpled gum wrapper on the ground. I'm glad that blew into the graveyard. <laughs> you grab it and with shaking fingers you write down the year of Sarah's death and hope you chose correctly. Have you written down the date of Sarah's death? Good. Because something terrifying is happening behind you. You really don't want to keep your back turned. So put down your pencil and turn to page 114. If you dare. Nah, I don't dare. Story over. <laughs> you don't like the prickly feeling in the back of your neck. You turn around slowly and gasp. The coffins have moved again. You can tell because you've wandered to the front of the graveyard. You are standing by the first row. Excuse me. The row that spelled out you in the curse. The row that used to have only three tombstones. But now the front row is crowded with graves, seven of them. Four more coffins have creeped into place. You glance toward the back of the graveyard and notice new empty spots. It's true. The tombstones are spelling again. Your heart pounds as you run along the row, reading the four new names, trying to see what the new initials will spell out. Bannister. Oswald. Thackeray. Hamilton. B O T H Oh no. Now the message reads You both will die soon. Dun 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 Quick hurry to page thirty one Ooh, train's coming. Your throat tightens in terror. Your heart pounds wildly. Both you and your grandmother are cursed now. Your granny can't even see the ghosts. She won't be able to save herself. It's all up to you. You grip the sword so hard your hand cramps. You've got to stop the coffins from moving again. And you've got to do it now before the final coffin moves into place and the curse is complete. But who is the most powerful ghost? One more letter, you mutter. Only one more letter is needed to spell out the message. The last letter in the word die. The letter E. Then it hits you. The most powerful ghost must be someone whose last name starts with an E. That's it! You may live after all. You run to the graveyard, looking at the tombstone, searching for E's. You find three. Melvin? A step? I actually don't know how to pronounce that last name. A step? E step? We'll call it a step. A step. <laughs> Take a step, Melvin. Then you've got Melvin. A step. The second. And then we have Brandon a step. But which one is the MPG? You could guess. Or you could go in the house and ask Elvira for help. Alright, folks. Would you like to take a guess? If you guess, take a stab at it on page 48. Or, if you'd like to ask Elvira for help, turn to page 28 at... Really? Shh. 
I'm recording videos for the internet. How rude. <laughs> so yeah, would you like to do a one in three chance here? <laughs> Or would we like to try to ask Elvira for help? Although, who knows? Maybe by the time we find Elvira, maybe she won't help us anymore. Maybe it'll take too long. Maybe the curse will already spell itself out. Let me know what you think, folks. Let him know. So the future can... <laughs> no. <laughs> no more.